In this class we continued to look at the rectilinear motion of particles and we did it by looking at graphs. And so we're going to draw graphs of acceleration velocity position. We can solve some problems fairly easily this way but they can also uh, help us to really understand the relationships between these uh, quantities acceleration velocity and position. All the graphs we're going to make uh, have time on the horizontal axis so we call the acceleration graph AT, VT for velocity, ST for position. Uh, the book also uh, make some graphs with position on the x-axis, but to me they aren't nearly as useful. You don't see the direct relationship between the quantities like you do when time is on the axis. So if we start out with our definition of acceleration, the uh, change rate of change of velocity. Well, of course that's just a derivative, so on the graph that's the slope. So the slope of our velocity graph is the acceleration at any particular point in time. Rearranging that equation and integrating both sides, we find that the change in velocity is the integral of the acceleration. In other words, it's the area under the acceleration graph between any two time steps. Similarly, the position is the, um, excuse me, the derivative of position with respect to time is the velocity. So the slope of the position graph is the velocity and again rearranging things we can see that the change in position is the area under the velocity graph between any two time points. So we can illustrate this probably uh, best by looking at a simple example. So in this case the acceleration for 30 seconds is a constant 4 meters per second squared. After that we decelerate at 3 meters per second squared for another 30 seconds. And it's important to note here, before we can uh, draw the velocity graph, we have to know what the initial velocity is. In this case, we're told the particle is at rest that t equals zero, so we start our velocity graph there. Now, let's look at the areas under the curve. Uh, this first rectangular region, it's uh, 4 meters per second squared times 30 seconds, so you can see the units are units of velocity, 120 meters per second. The negative area, is uh, 3 is the deceleration rate times 30 seconds so it's a negative 90 meters per second so what that means is over that one minute time step the velocity starts at 0 we increase it by 120 so we end up at a at a velocity of 120 meters per second at t equals 30 seconds then we decrease by 90 meters per second so we end up at the end of that one minute will be at 30 meters per second and so we can plot that as shown. Now notice, of course, we know that those are straight lines because the acceleration are constant. And remember, the slope of the velocity curve is the acceleration. So a slope of 4 and a slope of minus 3. Now if we look at the areas uh, under the curve here, that first triangular region gives us 1,800. And again, the units meters per second times second gives us units of position, in this case meters. And this trapezoidal area, by taking the average velocity, multiplying it by 30 seconds, 2,250 meters. So the total distance traveled will be the sum of those two. We move 1,800 meters over the first 30 seconds and an additional 2,250 over the final 30 seconds. And based on that, we can draw the ST curve. So you notice at 30 seconds our value is uh, at the 1800 and at uh, 60 seconds we're at that final value of 4020. And the shape of the curve, if we uh, draw this to scale, you can see we do start out with a velocity of zero. Well, remember the slope of this curve is the velocity. So we start out with a slope of zero indicating a velocity of zero. For the first 30 seconds, you can see the slope is increasing. Well, again, that's because the velocity is increasing. And over the last 30 seconds, the slope is decreasing. Now, sometimes we'll want to use numerical methods. It was easy to do this problem we just looked at because of the fact the acceleration, all steps were constant. Then when we integrate, the velocity will be linear. And again, it's easy to find the areas underneath those curves. On the other hand, if the acceleration is higher order, then uh, the velocity is going to be higher order as well. 
and finding those areas is not as straightforward as finding the area of a rectangle or a trapezoid. And of course you can use numerical integration uh, to, um, to at least come up with an estimate for the velocity and the um, uh, position at any time. And also there are some examples where instead of having the acceleration or even the velocity as a function, we might have just individual point values, in which case we have to use numerical integration for that. So we're kind of done with rectilinear motion uh, for now, and we'll look at a uh, more general case of motion where we have the motion being along the curved path. And we can use three different coordinate systems there. The first one that we'll use in the next class is going to be the one we're most familiar with, a uh, rectangular or Cartesian coordinates, so X and Y coordinate system.